man did it. That you are seeing that Lord, that Brahman, his effusion in all the beings. Whether it's an animal which comes before you, whether it's a serpent which comes before you, whether it's a monkey, whether it's a man, you first have the imaginary thought. You just imagine, <coughs> yes, this contains the same effusion. It is the same. Inside there is only one electricity. These are all the various bulbs. So it is only the one electricity which is playing in all these beings. So that Brahman is there. So he should imagine as if he is seeing that Brahman. He is seeing his effulgence in all the beings. So that is what is called Advaita Bhava. You start with the imagination. Wherever you see, the morning you go into the bathroom, the moment you see the wall, don't think there is a wall. You say, this is all consists of the same consciousness. The Supreme God is inside this also. So everything, whatever you see, you imagine it consists of that Supreme Being only. That when you see the Supreme Being in all the beings, by imagination, continuously doing it, doing it, doing it for perhaps 30 years, 40 years, you will begin to see the real effulgence of that Brahman. You will be able to see that very consciousness. No more a make believe is necessary. No more an imagination is necessary. Your imagination would have become the truth by the time. So, this is an easy way. For 20 years, 30 years, wherever you see, you say, this is the super consciousness. This is the supreme being. There is only one Supreme Being who is in all. He is inhabiting all the beings. We are all bulbs. One may be a doctor, one may be an engineer, but who does the work of the engineer? Who is activating your brain? Who is activating your eyes? So every act of yours is being activated by the Supreme Being. So he is the one, he is the real one. You are only the bulb. You are only the machine. What can the machine do? Unless there is electricity. The same machine prints to the printing machine. It extrudes to the extrusion machine. So all the work is being done by the same supreme being. So, Advaita Bhavana Yuktaha in the 14th sloka. Advaita Bhavana Yuktaha Sarvatra Pani Samhutitaka Sarvadam Sarvade Gattam so initially, Advaita Bhavana Yuktaha have that Advaita Bhavana. Imagine non-duality. Even when you are saying different things, by your imagination you say, no, this is only a delusion. Actually it is only that one supreme being which is inside all these things. All these things are made up of and being activated by that one supreme force. So Advaita Bhavana Yukta. So have that imagination that everything is non-duality. So having the notion of non-duality through imagination, Sarvatra Atmanitam Kita. So in all places, Sarvatra everywhere. So whatever beings come, wherever you go, you just don't think of the form. Don't think of the form. Don't say this is a plant. Don't say this is a tree. Don't say this is a donkey. Don't say this is a cow. But you just look into the Atman. The electricity is inside it. The supreme force. Be established in the inner force, the inner consciousness which is in all the being, be established in it. Don't see the external form and say that inner consciousness is one and the same. The same consciousness is in me, it is also in that. There are not two consciousness, it is only that one supreme consciousness which is everywhere. Sarvatra Atmani Samskita. Being established everywhere in that Atman, in that spirit, 
and not in the matter and not in the body. Don't think of the body. The moment you see the body going free, the body is only a thick covering. What is inside that works, it is that supreme being. Then, Sarvadam Sarvade Kattam Pasyatyatlana Samsayaha In due course, he will see that supreme course, consciousness, everywhere. Sarvatradam. He will find that it is everywhere, it is omnipresent. He will see that very omnipresent. He will be able to come into direct contact. He will be able to see with his inner eye that supreme consciousness in every being, everywhere. Sarva Deha He will see it in all the bodies. Sarva Deha That it is in all the bodies. He will see that same supreme consciousness working in all the bodies. He will be able to see that resplendent supreme being working from inside the heart of all. He will be able to directly see through his inner eye. That thing will come. Start with your imagination. That's the only way this body we got to imagination. This body is not real. How did you get it? It is only an imagination of the cosmic being. It is an imagination. And you are the cosmic being. So you imagine and you got this, this particular body. So imagination is extremely, imagination is after the thought. Thought is an extremely potent force. Use it prudently. Every thought will fructify. So never think of a bad thought. Always think of a good thought. It will fructify. The time is its own. It will fructify now. It will fructify later. But it shall fructify. No thoughts get wasted. That is what Master said. So, you only have the imagination of Advaita. Think that all these things are Brahman. All these are the Supreme Food. Go on thinking like that. Then a day will come when you no longer require imagination to buttress your thoughts. You will actually see the abundance of Brahman coming out of everybody. That day will come. So, Atra Nasamsheha, there is no doubt about it. It will take place. That's what Lord Shiva says. Now, Yevam ekat tadha vena Tam sthitasya dujoginaha Sarva gyatvam pradhartheta Vikasvar gitasya cha He is telling us some of the incidental benefits in root when you are practicing this identification with all the beings as the only one supreme being having been established in all the various bodies. You see, Yevam Yekatmadha Vena Samstitasya Tu Yoginaha Yoginaha, fear me, a man who is doing this particular part of meditation enunciated in this book so far. This Soham type of meditation as also the second time which has started. See, the Soham type is over. Now, he has given you an extra thing so that the Soham type of meditation will be more effective. So, it is not a question of only meditating on the Soham, but on the contrary, every day, morning to evening, whatever you see, by imagination, think that it is the Brahman's effulgence that is coming out of it. It is the Brahman which is occupying it inside and outside. It is that which activates it, which makes it function. So by imagining it, one day it will become a fact. So this is one technique. It is a subsidiary technique which is helpful for the soul technique. And this subsidiary technique has got also a subsidiary effect. It is not the main one. We are, we are not to be lost anywhere on the way. When you have decided that you want to come face to face with the ultimate truth, with the ultimate reality, the super consciousness, 
never, never carry anywhere in between, however attractive it may be. No doubt, it's an obstacle. You will get certain siddhis in between. That's what he is now going to explain. Yevam, thus, in the manner as said above, in the earlier poem, Yekatma Bhavena Sapsita Sati Yogina, who is a yogi? Here, he doesn't mean a man who is doing the pranayam or the man who is doing his asanas. No. Here by yogi, he means a man who adapts this particular yoga, which is mentioned in this book, that is the Soham type of meditation, that I am that. So, for that yogi, so what is this yogi is doing? The subjugatory practice which he is doing is Ekatma Bhavena Sapsita he is established in identification with all the beings saying that there is only one of them. Just as there is only one electricity which is going on in all the buzz, there is nothing called a zero metal electricity, there is nothing called a thousand metal electricity, there is only one electricity which comes through one wire. And when it goes to zero watt, what happens? Its wattage is full, its wattage is infinite. It is neither limited to 1000 watts, nor limited to 200 watts, nor limited to 0 watts. Its wattage is infinite when it comes from the generator place. But then what happens is, the bulb has got its own conditioning. The conditioning of the mind as in the man, similarly there is the conditioning in each bulb. They have got some constant filaments with various resistances. They don't allow the full abundance to come out. They are absorbing. It is not the fault of the electricity. The electricity is infinite. And the electricity inside the bulb, if it falsely identifies itself, thinking that I am the bulb, and then it gets miserable, look here, and the zero bag, see that child, the thousand bag, how brilliant it is, whose fault it is? It is our fault. Because it's the fault of the bulb, which is ignorant as to what it is. That electricity in that zero watt bulb thinks that I am the zero watt bulb. It is not the zero watt bulb. It has failed to identify itself with that supreme being. So identify yourself with that supreme consciousness, which is everywhere. Don't identify yourself with the body and say, I am Shantananda, I am Ram, I am David, I am Johnson. No, you are neither David nor Johnson. You are that supreme being. A part of it is coming here. If there are 20 machines in the workshop of various channels, one is a boring machine, one is a drilling machine, one is a lathe. But it is the same electricity which goes inside. It goes in the printing machine. The printing machine has got certain equipment inside which can do the printing. So it is the same electricity which does the printing in the printing machine. It is the same electricity which does the drilling. It is the same electricity which does the boring. So all the functions of all the bodies, of all the machines, are being done by one supreme consciousness. Their electricity is an inert energy. What is an inert energy? An energy which doesn't know that it exists. It has, it has no consciousness. Consciousness means the knowledge that I exist. When on that consciousness is there, everything follows. You can be kind, you can be compassionate. Electric energy cannot be compassionate. Oh, poor man, he can't afford to pay the bill. This one, I won't make him spend a lot, but I will give him enough electricity, but I will see that the meter doesn't run. No, it won't do. It doesn't have any compassion with you. Because it's inner. It can't express its kindness. While you and I can express our kindness. So the supreme consciousness, it is so supreme, finally, it will have a supreme compassion. Huh, in this connection, I want to tell one small thing. Yesterday, two or three people were raising the question. When I was talking on the partial meditation, how it is harmful. Some people raised the question. Sir, we are now keeping one idol, and we say this is the Divine Mother, we bow before her. We are having a linga, Arunacharya and we go and bow before her. Is this not a partial meditation? No. Because, the roots of virtual meditation which I told yesterday that were meant only for the formless meditation, the meditation of Nirguna Vasana. 
that is the formless supreme consciousness which is supposed to be bereft of all attributes, which has no qualities, which cannot be thought of, which cannot be described. So that when you are thinking, you have to be careful. It has to be a total meditation covering all the manifestations as well as the unmanifested. That is very essential. Otherwise, partial meditations will lead us to the calamity. But in the case of the other one, it is governed by different laws. The different laws is initially many of us start by praying to that law. That Lord is the statue or the idol. How? It is called the Samana Pasana. We attribute all the qualities to the Lord. We say, Lord, you are full of compassion. Lord, you are full of kindness. You are full of affection for me. I surrender myself to your feet. It is you who have to protect me. So, in that surrender, what is the virtue? By your own very thought, you are establishing a net of defense around you. You have friends around you that protects you. Because it is the friends wherein we have considered the highest as full of compassion, full of kindness, as the protecting presence which is always by your side and which is protecting you in that protect. Because you have will be so. It is your will which comes through that idol. Your will is supreme because you are that finally. But you have externalized it. You have placed all yourself in that. And you are thinking that is the supreme Brahman. Well, that will give you all you need. So as it is not considered it's a partial meditation, whatever difference will come in that meditation also, that will be removed by that very force to whom uh, you are offering your worship. And finally, that leads you only to a Sagana Samadhi. It is called uh, this Savikalpa Samadhi. Savikalpa Samadhi is where the differentiation exists. Where you find the Lord, you find Lord Narayana. You will not say it is I. You will immediately say, bow to Lord Narayana. He is coming with a discus in his hand, with a maze in his hand, and uh, with a diadem, a crown. Well, you call it his feet, or you see Lord Shiva with matted hair, with a ganges, with a crescent moon, and with a trident in his hand. We will say, call it his feet. You are seeing all these things. And uh, don't think it is an imagination, don't think it is a KG class thing. It is also equally a way. People who are unable to directly catch the Supreme Consciousness, people who will have no belief in a personal God. So for such people, it is the other type of material which is useful. For them, they have to be careful. So that doesn't apply to this. These are governed by different laws. Then, so a person who is having this ekapa bhava, that there is only one Atman, that there is only one force, one supreme force which is occupying all these bulbs. One bulb will be called an engineer, another bulb will be called a teacher, another bulb will be called a 13 year old man, one may be called an SLC, another is an MLC, another is a PhD. They are all bulbs. There is only one force which occupies them all. Ekatma Bhavena. For such a person, Vikalpa Rahita Sita, he has already been shorn of all differentiation. Vikalpa means differentiation. So undifferentiated or be a man who is bereft of all duality, no more duality. He doesn't see anybody as separate from his own self. He sees his own self everybody, on everybody. Then what will happen? You will have no special attachment to somebody. Why? Because everybody is your own self. Who is your favorite? And there will be no foe, there will be no enmity, there will be no hostility, there will be no ill will in your mind against anybody. Whatever he may do, he may even cut your hand, he will say, I will cut my own hand. Just as my own teeth may cut my own um, tongue sometimes. So in the same way, and at that stage, because for instance such a, a yogi who has practiced this type of meditation, who is practicing through imagination to see the same Supreme Being in all the beings mentally. You need not go and fall below the pillar, oh Supreme Being, thanks to you who are giving me darshan the morning. No, do it only mentally. It is all a mental exercise. You do it and one day you will see 
that this is not an ordinary pillar. You will see the fire inside it, the Arunachari Sura inside it. You might see the day will come. That's what he said in the previous one. To him what happens? Sarvakyatam Prabhatteta. He begins to know everything. He is the knower of all. Whatever goes in anybody's mind, he can understand it. He becomes a Sarvajna. Sarvajna means omniscient. The man who knows everything, whatever happens to whomsoever, wherever it may be, he will be able to know. There is an anecdote of Bhagavan. There is a lady in some village, girl, in her teens perhaps, she was, somebody has given her a book on Ramana. Whenever she touches the book, she couldn't open the book. She used to go into ecstasy. Some sort of an emotion will take place. She cannot control herself. She will not know what is happening to her mind, her entire soul, heart, everything is so in the air. She will not be even aware of her body that way. She was never able to open the book at all. At last one day, she was able to open the book and see. There he found it was Bhagavan Ramana and he said Sarvanamala and all that. Immediately, a yeah, very strong yearning came into our mind. I should go to Tiruvannamalai and see Bhagavan. Who would uh, allow me to up a girl from a village to go all the way to Tiruvannamalai or who would accompany her? There is no question in those days, especially in the South Indian families, the father was absolutely was an autocrat. I will call it a despot even sometimes. <laughs> the day, not like today. So nobody will dare to go before the father. No son will sit before the father, that's a day. Even if he is 60 years old, father is 80 years old, he won't sit before him even. So, but night and day, she couldn't even take her meal. She was thinking, oh, I want to go and see Bhagavan. What can I do? At last, one day, she couldn't get her in the meal. And she came to Tiruvanna. A girl, all alone, who never knew where Tiruvanna was, some of her people, she kept to know some She got some great somebody. She came here. But she was all the time trembling, shaking with fear. Oh, somebody or other might recognize me. Somebody will catch me and take me back. I will get very severe punishment. I will not be allowed to even come up to the house in future. So she was extremely worried about it. And she didn't know what sort of reception he will have. Whether Bhagavan will see her or not, will she be able to see him or not. Because she doesn't know. Like a king, he may lock himself in. Only with appointment one can see. So they didn't know about Bhagavan in those days. He's, um, she was a villager. So with all her tribulation, she came. At last she came to the hall where Bhagavan was sitting. She saw Bhagavan. Just then Bhagavan began to narrate something. He was just then telling, you know, I had to come out of my house like a thief. I had to sneak out. And while coming every time I was afraid that somebody may catch me and take me back. Huh? Oh. So Bhagavan is telling for me. <laughs> so that girl, she was simply put at ease the moment she entered. She said, I have come to my house. I have come. This is my home. That's not my home. So she was completely at ease, even though everybody was a stranger. She came like that. So Bhagavan knew this thing. And another time, there was one great devotee of Bhagavan known as Nambia. Mr. Nambia used to have sometimes some beautiful dreams. One night he was dreaming that Bhagavan is sitting and a number of people are sitting and doing their meditation before him. And there was a Govan whose name was Sridhar or something. He had seen him there before Bhagavan. He was there at that time. <coughs> he was from Goa. He suddenly saw this leader was reading a book, he was reciting some poems, some sotra, some hymns. He was doing a parayana, recitation. And at that time he found 
that drum is fine, a yeah, big fire was coming out and it was coming out of the head of that moon. It started from the spine and it was coming out. Suddenly he found that Bhagavan looked at him and said, Hey, all this gymnastics is not necessary. This won't take you further. Leave all this. The best thing is for you to go up to self inquiry as to who he is, then the safest path and you will reach the goal. Leave all these things. This is what he saw in the dream. He was not sure whether it is his own imagination, all those things. And not only that, Bhagavan said, you are doing pranayam, this is the effect of it. There is no need that will take you into difficult things and dangers tomorrow. You leave all these breath control business. This pranayam. This is what he told me. That is why he said gymnastics. There is this pranayam business. The next day, he saw the Govan. He said, sir, I don't know whether I am telling you rightly or not, but this is the dream I had. Immediately tears began to flow from the Govan's eyes. Yes, I very wanted very much to ask Bhagavan whether my path is right, whether it should continue or whether it should change. But I never had the guts. All these days I was postponing. Now I have got the reply. Thank you so much. So, this is Sarvakya Thom. Bhagavan knew that this man is unable to express, but he is a good devotee. Unless his doubt is cleared, he may not be able to progress in this direction. And he was doing something to not suit him. So Bhagavan had to tell him, but he made Mr. Namjya like this. Sarvajnatum pravarteta vikalparahitasya. So this sort of a man who is going on this path, he gets this thing very easily. Anybody, it is not only the soul type of business. Anybody who does this type of meditation for a number of years, even for two, three hours a day, continuously. All these things come, you see, these are all some sort of cities. Sometimes they are all meant as a milestone to encourage a man, look here, you have come to your stage, carry on further. But if only we think of demonstrating it to others, we go on talking to everything, this is what happened, look here, I am able to know everything. See, that man came in America, I told him, you are such a he was, how did you know Swamiji? I said, I know, that's all. So then you know, this will be an obstacle, we will never go forward. So we have to ignore and go ahead. Only today I got an email from a lady from somewhere. She is a highly pleased official. She read Swamiji suddenly for the last four days I have seen. I am doing a small puja and I keep some badam in a plate and a cup of milk and I was placing before the Lord. And suddenly I found the first day one of the badams they kept in this plate it was floating on the milk. After praying, the moment I saw, one of them was floating on the milk. I kept the three full badams. That badam which was floating was hot. It was hot cut. This happened not on one day, three days continuously. She said, Swamiji, whether it's a delusion, whether I'm in the right path, whether it's something else, is it a good force or is it an evil force, whether it's good or not, I do not know. Like that, she has sent me the email to so, all these things happen. It's not an email. She sent a letter. In the email, this was not mentioned. In the letter, it was mentioned. Both came today from the same person. See, all these things come, but one has to be wary of them. You cannot take progress and serve it. Ignore it and go ahead further. This is only a copper mine. You will get a diamond mine if you go further. If you are with this copper mine only, you lose something for this. That's all. The next one is Yosav Sarve to Shastre to Pachate Chada Ishwaraha Aka Yosne Pino Kyatma So Kamas Mina Tanshayaha. Yes, he says when you are doing the Soha meditation, this is what you should think. Whatever I am reading in all the scriptures, the scriptures talk of a God 
The scripture is taught of a super consciousness. The scripture is taught of an eternal absolute. The scripture is taught of one reality. So, Yotam Sarveshu Shastreshu Patyate, the one who is being talked about, Patyate, is being read, talked about, Sarveshu Shastreshu, in all the scriptures. Whichever scripture you take, there there is a mention of some God, or some Supreme Being, or Supreme Atman, Brahman, or an eternal absolute. So there is a mention. And it talks of Aja, Ishwara. It talks of a God who is never born. He is not created. He is the creator of all. He himself is unborn. He has no cause. He has always been existing. He is existence, not existing. He is the essence of all existence. Whatever exists, that existence is He. And we call Him also as Ishwara, the controller of all. And sometimes it is mentioned in the scriptures, He has no body, Akayaha. We are all embodied, but that controller of all, that supreme being, it has no body. So it is Akaya. Akaya means a body. Akaya means there is no body. It is not embodied. Then, Nirgunohi Atma. It has got no attributes. It is absolutely colorless. It is beyond all description. It defies all imagination and concepts. It is beyond all concepts. You can't conceive of as to what it is like because there is something which is beyond all your experiences. All your experiences are based on your five senses. And these five senses are a drop of this creation. So how can a microscope be able to see itself? How can a drop of this creation bear to see its creator? It is impossible. Yes, it can do it, provided you go by the right path. You cannot see it with your senses. Absolutely not. You have to adopt a different procedure as given you have the soul and creation and all that. This is what is required. Akayo Nirguno Atma. He is the very self. He is you. You are always talking, I, I. What is that I? If you analyze it, in the ultimate sense you will find it is your own self. And he is the Ishvara. God is not somewhere sitting in a 300 story building on room number 808. No. He is here. He is you. He is not separate from you. Akayo, Virguno, Kyatma, Soham Asmi, I am that. So again it comes back to the Soham meditation. Soham Asmi, I am that. I am that about whom I have read in all the scriptures. I am that who is called as the unborn. I am that who is known as Ishwara, the controller of the entire universe. Who is the programmer of our dream? Who is the programmer of this life? This life we are taking seriously. No, it's not worth taking seriously. The entire thing is a cosmic dream. You and I are the actors. Just as in your own dream, you are seeing 20 people there. Somebody is trying to go into a train. The train is already started. You are seeing all that. So from where have they come, those 20 people? It is yourself. You have created them. The entire dream is your own self. Every one of them is your own self. But they are all acting. So in the dream, if your tiger is coming, if all these 20 people are running helter-skelter, there is no need because all of them are the dreamer. The dreamer is safe. No tiger of the dream can come into the plane. He cannot be caught. The dreamer is all alone. He is all happiness. He is looking at it. He is enjoying the dream. The cosmic being is enjoying the dream of all. And we have identified ourselves with the role we are playing. I am thinking I am David. You are identifying with all the problems of David, from problems of economy, problems in social life, problems in the office, problems in wife, and you are thinking, oh, this 
David is useless. No, if David is lost, they don't. I can very soon say. Who is David? It is only a drama you are playing, man. It is only a costume you are wearing. You are not David. You are beyond it. You are neither David nor Johnson. The entire thing, all the people, is only one actor. It is just like when Elizabeth Taylor playing the role of five ladies in a, in a cinema. One may be a beggar woman, one may be a queen, another may be a tailor woman, but all those were only a little tailor. That's all. And being the queen, she put the tailor woman to set the day. Whom did she put to set the day? Their own self. That's all. So what is that to be wondered? What is that to be sorrowed at? The entire thing is a drama. So, Akayo Nikuno Kyatma. So the must be the sum I am that there is absolutely no doubt about it. Then, you see, he is ultimately giving something about the type of this total meditation on Soma. And at the same time, in order to infuse a spirit of enthusiasm in us for enabling us going to this type of meditation, he is giving the ethics of such meditation. I hear this. Avijnata pasusuki sritti dharmam samashritaham vijnata shatvata suddhaham shashivonatra samchayaham Look here, the man who doesn't know this fact that this entire thing is a cosmic dream and we are all having various costumes and playing a role. And unfortunately, I didn't bring up with this drama, drama role, and I didn't bring up with the problems of the drama, which is only a script after all, which you are enacting. So the day you are to, you should then know that I am not what I am like, I am not David, I am not Shantananda, I am not Johnson, I am not Ram, I am not Krishna. I am that one supreme being. There is only one electricity which has gone into all the bulbs, whether it is a fluted bulb, whether it is a seven bulb, whether it is a thousand bulb, there is only one electricity. There is only one wire. And what is the vital electricity? It is infinite. So I am the infinite. So a man who doesn't know this, Abhikyataha, the one who doesn't know the truth, the one who doesn't know the reality, the one who doesn't know what he is, really. But the man who is under the delusion that he is what he seems to be, assuming the name which his parents have given, and depending on the body which he has, which is having as a costume, and that disguise he takes it to be his own form, and such a person, Sahib Pasuhu is an animal who never tries to understand who he is. <coughs> but on the contrary, he is doing PhD on a butterfly, on a cockroach. Twenty years of his life he goes, sits in a forest, in a colony of cockroaches. He writes a big thesis, gets his PhD. What does he mean? So, he is equal to a person. So the one who tries to understand himself, do all things you are yourself. The entire macrocosm is in the microcosm. The day you meet yourself, you will know everybody. There is no need to analyze the gold separately, silver separately, the copper separately, the butterfly separately, the flora and fauna separately. You just analyze yourself, the entire thing, because there is no world apart from yourself. The entire thing is a projection of your own self. If you understand yourself, you will understand everything. The day you reform yourself, your world gets reformed. The entire thing is a dream. In your dream daily, if you are seeing only decoys are coming and looting, whose fault it is that shows that all the decoys are in your heart, they are in your chitta, they are in your computer memory, and it is they who are coming. So you change your condition of the mind, and all the decoys will fly away. So today you are saying, oh, the world is so corrupt, nobody is bothered about spirituality, all are irreligious, 
all are only hypocrites. You rip off yourself, never point out on the others. Then your world will change. So all the people who are saying they are your dream bigger, your dream will change. And your world will become perfect when you become perfect. So avidyataha pajastodhi, the one who has not understood the reality as to who he is, he is equal to a pashu. Pashu means an animal. What is the use of all his rationality? Why God has given him this intellect? If he can't use it to understand the subtle things behind his life as to who he is, wherefore he has come, that is what we should do first. Then what will happen? What will be the result? If you remain without bothering about these things, you are your dear Lord. You may build mansions, you may have all the material comforts, but Srifti Dharma Samashrita, all the characteristics of birth and death will follow. In other words, you will be again and again subject to the vicious circle of birth and death, and naturally all the other consequences in every life there will be a drama, a drama of conflicts, a drama of sorrows, a drama of hardships, a drama of suffering. All these things will follow. Frustrations, unhappiness, depressions, everything will follow. Srikti Dharma Samasitra. This is the Dharma of the Srikti. If you continue to be a creature, you will be born again and again. You will be subject to birth and death. And that is the characteristic of all creation. Don't identify yourself the creation. Identify yourself the creator. Then all your dream will vanish. Srikti Dharma Samasrita. That is, you will be, you will resort to the characteristic of Srikti. That is, you will be subject to the cycle of birth and death with all its undesirable consequences. Vidyataha. On the contrary, the one who knows who he is, or the one who strives to know, the one who is on the path, Vidyata, the one who knows. It is not necessarily that you should go to the ultimate state even. If once you know that this is my duty, I should know who I am, I, who I am. That is the most important thing. That is the only purpose of his life. So the man who even knows this much, he can be called as Vidyata in a way. So the one who knows as to who he is, or at least who is on the path to know, striving to know who he is, he is Shashwata. He is no longer subject to all these transitory states of coming and going. He will have a permanent state. He will be unmovable. He will be like a rock. Because he will be the Supreme Consciousness. The Supreme Consciousness remains immutable, imperishable, unchangeable, is not subject to any changes. We are not subject to any changes. We are subject to decay. We are subject to old age. We are subject to growth. We are subject to various types of changes. But the final Supreme Being remains unchanged. We will reach that stage. Shuddha, then we will be pure, pure. What is meant by pure? The day you know that who you are, then you know that everybody is your own self. There is nobody but yourself. Then, then we neither friend nor foe. When you are seeing everybody as yourself, who is your friend and who is your foe? Who is your favorite and who is your not favorite? Where can there be hostility? Where can there be ill will? Where can there be enmity? You will have amity. You will have peace. You will have harmony. You will have love. You will have kindness with all. So that is your Shuddha. And that is the stage of going to the Supreme State. That is the stage of Shiva. Shiva is only a synonym for the Supreme Being who is formless. Here we don't mean Shiva, the personal God. Here he means the impersonal God because this happens to be the Shaivagama. So the Supreme Being is called the Shiva. That is the state of Shiva. Natra Saksha. There is absolutely no doubt. It is the Lord Himself speaking. So He says, Believe in me. 